Welcome to a closer look into the science behind the carry-free carry screen meter and the five different protective factors utilized in the CTX product line. First, let's spend some time talking about the carry screen test. This is a chair side swab test that measures biofilm activity levels. With this test, we can determine if the patient has a high or a low biofilm challenge. The technique of conducting the test is not difficult. It's actually very easy, and we recommend watching a short video demonstration on the correct technique. You can also download the carry screen guide for a step-by-step -step reference. One thing I would like to point out in regard to performing the swabbing test is that it's important to maintain consistency as much as possible. As with obtaining any scientific data, we want to prevent changing variables from one test to another as much as we can. This means using the same technique, having the same person or same few people performing the test each time, only screening a patient once within a 24-hour period of time, and being sure to perform the test prior to the prophy or probing. The meter is looking for a molecule called ATP or adenosine triphosphate, which you may recognize as an energy molecule that exists in almost all living cells. We use this as our biomarker for caries risk because we now know that dental caries is caused by more bacterial species than just strep mutans and lactobacillus. In fact, there are some 40 types of bacteria within the oral biofilm that have been implicated in this disease. ATP is the common denominator between these different kinds of bacteria because high acid producing bacteria also produce about a hundred times more ATP than healthy bacteria through a process called hydrogen extrusion. After the bacterial sample is collected with the swab from the lower linguals, canine to canine, the swab is placed back in its protective tube. The swab has an eyedropper-like bulb at the end containing two reagents that are then mixed with the bacterial sample. The two enzymes we are using are luciferin and luciferase. By combining these two bioluminescent enzymes with an energy source, ATP, we yield a light reaction which is then measured by the carry screen meter. The results of this test will be in the form of a number. We're looking for a number either above or below 1500. The number 1500 indicates that of all the bacteria in the mouth, 1% or less of it is composed of high acid producers, and that's what we want. Anything above 1500 indicates the patient is at risk. The units of measurement are RLUs, or relative light units. This means the meter is detecting the amount of light produced by the reaction at the tip of the swab relative to the amount of light in the meter during the initial 60 second countdown process. When interpreting your patient's test, it's important that we all take a step back and understand exactly what the meter is and isn't telling us. The common misperception, which is totally natural and it happens to every practice we train, is that the meter will always correlate to cavities. So if the patient has a mouthful of decay, they will always get a high reading, and if they don't have decay, they will get a low reading. However, the purpose of the meter is not to confirm decay or tell you if your patient is a good guy or a bad guy. We use the carry screen reading to help determine which mouth rinse to offer. Our CTX4 treatment rinse is an antibacterial rinse prescribed to patients with a high biofilm challenge. If they do not have a high biofilm challenge, we would recommend a kit containing our CTX3 rinse that does not contain the antibacterial component. More information about our product line can be found at carryfree.com or by watching the CTX products video. A patient's level of caries risk is determined by how their particular combination of risk and protective factors affects their oral environment. Whatever is going on in a patient's mouth is a result of this balance between their disease indicators, their risk factors, and whatever protective factors they have. The next part of this video will discuss the five different protective factors and agents used to outweigh our patient's level of risk and keep their balance in check. We know that there are five recommended treatment components prescribed for caries management and that help change our patient's balance. The star figure you see is what we call the CTX guide and it provides a simplified way of identifying the protective factors used in each of the different CTX products. The five treatment components are pH neutralization, broad spectrum antibacterial therapy, fluoride, 
xylitol, and nanohydroxyapatite, or forms of calcium and phosphate for remin support. We're going to take a closer look at each, starting with pH neutralization. Now pH is one of the most important factors in maintaining healthy teeth. We know that oral pH fluctuates greatly throughout the day, dipping especially low after mealtimes. Prolonged or intense low pH in the mouth leads to death of the healthy bacteria and or overgrowth of cavity-causing bacteria, which causes the caries infection. By maintaining a pH above 5.5, which is the critical pH level at which teeth begin to dissolve or demineralize, we can help select for a healthier bacterial population that thrives at neutral or alkaline pH levels. Many over-the-counter and prescription dental rinses have a surprisingly low pH. All of the carry-free CTX products have an alkaline pH ranging from 8 to 11. We recommend using our oral rinses and gels twice daily, morning and night, and we also have additional products that can be used throughout the day to help maintain a neutral or alkaline oral pH. The next protective factor is antibacterial agents. Many different antibacterial agents have been used in dentistry from alcohol to essential oils to iodine to chlorhexidine, all aimed at killing the biofilm. We now know that there are only three ways to remove or kill an established biofilm. Complete mechanical debridement, which is impossible in the mouth. Heat in excess of 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is also impossible in the mouth and would destroy tooth structure. Or by using a very strong oxidizing agent capable of penetrating a biofilm. It is for this reason the carry-free treatment rinse contains 0.2% sodium hypochlorite as a broad-spectrum oxidizing agent. Many people ask why we use sodium hypochlorite as opposed to chlorhexidine. That's because although chlorhexidine has proven significant against strep mutans, it also has little effect on lactobacillus, coincidentally increasing the total amount of lactobacillus in the biofilm. In fact, in the April 2011 edition of JADA, the ADA Council on Scientific Affairs made a recommendation against chlorhexidine use. Next is the natural sweetener xylitol. Xylitol is a 5-carbon alcohol sugar that has been recognized as an effective anti-caries agent. Caryogenic bacteria cannot metabolize xylitol, therefore inhibiting bacterial growth. Xylitol is safe for all age groups and is found in significant doses in all carry-free products. Xylitol also has a synergistic effect when combined with sodium fluoride, increasing anti-caries benefits by 12%, which leads us into fluoride, which is our next protective factor. Fluoride is widely used for caries prevention in dentistry and is an important factor in the remin process. The efficacy of fluoride has been proven in many scientific studies. Fluorapatite or hydroxyapatite particles combined with fluoride is more resistant to demineralization than hydroxyapatite, as shown in the graph on the screen. In the window of pH between 4.5 and 5.5, hydroxyapatite is dissolving while fluorapatite is forming. The presence of fluoride makes the enamel stronger and more decay resistant. Our CTX rinses contain 0.05 neutral sodium fluoride. We also have three different strengths of fluoride in our gels. The CTX4 Gel 5000 contains 1.1% neutral sodium fluoride. The CTX4 Gel 1100 contains a 0.24% neutral sodium fluoride. And we also have a CTX3 Gel, which is fluoride free. We also have our varnish, which is a 5% neutral sodium fluoride. The fifth and final protective factor is Remin. The cycle of demineralization and remineralization repeats continuously throughout the day in our mouth as the oral pH levels rise and fall. The cycle of demineralization and remineralization repeats continuously throughout the day in our mouths as the pH levels rise and fall. Remineralization is a natural process within a healthy patient's mouth that can be mimicked by introducing calcium and phosphate. Nanohydroxyapatite is a form of calcium and phosphate used by Carry Free for remin support. Other remineralization products utilize calcium and phosphate in ionic form and rely on these ions under specific saliva pH conditions 
to recrystallize into nanoapatite particles before they become bioavailable for remineralization. By using nanoparticles of hydroxyapatite, we have simply removed that step from the equation and optimized the amount of bioavailable nanohydroxyapatite crystals. Nanohydroxyapatite is present in all of our tooth gels, such as the CTX4 Gel 5000 pictured on the screen. We recommend patients use the gel twice daily, morning and night, as a toothpaste replacement. For more information about Cambra and the science behind Carry Free, please reference the book Balance. It's a guide for managing dental caries for both patients and dental professionals. You can find additional information on Cambra, Carry Free, and the CTX product line at carryfree.com. If you have any questions or would like a copy of Balance, please contact us at 866-928-4445.